Hi there. In this video, I'm going to be going over a new Text Mesh Pro feature, or at least its first implementation, and this new feature is called Margins. Now, Margins work in conjunction with a new Rec Transform that is part of Unity 4.6. Now what we're looking at here at the moment is a new Text Mesh Pro component which is the UGUI component of Text Mesh Pro which is designed to work with the new Unity 4.6 UGUI system, uh, Canvas, uh, UI renderer and obviously the Rec Transform. So let's take a look at this Rec Transform and the margins themselves. So the Rec Transform is pretty nice because now it's a, it's a transform, but it's a rectangular transform that has width and height. So now um, we can move this around. But what's really nice is it now gives us a volume to define the area where the text should live. Now, um, prior to these margins, if I was to uh, make them go away, and by the way, uh, this is the, a crude implementation of the controls for it. Don't, you know, it's not going to look like this. It's going to be pretty. Uh, this is just for me to test. Um, if I was to make the margins go away, um, the text basically is anchored or has the appearance of being anchored on the Rec Transform itself. So as I change the size, the word wrapping occurs and so on and so forth. Now there's an issue with this uh, and let me demonstrate this issue. I don't want to lose my text so let me just uh, copy it real quick and then I'm going to erase what's there and I'm going to show you the issue that we ran into. So if I type I and J, characters in a TTF font basically have an X and a Y offset. And in this case, this I has a positive offset and this Y is a negative X offset. The issue is that this little tip here sticks out outside of our Rec Transform. Now, why is that an issue? Well, it's kind of an issue because if this defines the boundary of where the text lives, well, we get this little piece sticking out, which yeah, I guess we could live with. But more importantly, if I was to turn on masking, masking, if I zoom in, you can see that the letter is being cut off right here, which, you know, that's a lot more of a problem. So how could we solve this? Well, I thought, well, um, let me turn off the masking again. How could this be solved? Well, we can control the masking offset and I could set the masking to take place outside the Rec Transform, but then that's kind of weird to have text sticking out through uh, outside the volume that's supposed to define where it lives. So then I started thinking, well, I guess we could inset the text. Well, that's where margins came in. You know, if you think of uh, something like Word or, or Word Processor, uh, you do have your page, which I guess would be your Rec Transform. And then inside of that page, you have your margins that define where your text lives. Um, so let me turn on these margins. Um, and you'll be able to set these values via the API, obviously. So now, as you can see, I can inset my text, and now it's actually anchored to this uh, margin instead. So let me go back to put our text back in. And let's play around with this. So right now, we've got the text being left justified. Now we're center justified. And again, we're center justified inside the margin area right justified, um, then I'll go back to center top, center center, center bottom, and then lastly let me go back to the top and use the full justified where now it's flush on either end. Same thing I can control from this area and over here and so on and so forth. Uh, and again here in case you're not familiar with this, in terms of word wrapping I can control whether or not the spacing or the gap that we need to fill is using just the space between words or if we're using a blend between words and characters. Okay, so now let's take a look a little bit more at the masking itself and how with the margin it kind of works and how, you know, it's pretty nice. So first thing I'm going to do is enable masking again. Uh, the masking panel will not be here. It's going to be moved up there into another section uh, and it will look prettier. Again, don't worry too much about that at this stage. So in terms of the masking, right now I've got a softness of 20 and we've got some weird boundaries, so I'll just reset them to, I guess, minus 15 each. 
Okay, so now if I was to manually, um, and this is how you would create a scroll box. Um, here you, have, you would animate the X offset or the Y offset. So right now I'll just play with the Y offset. So if I was to move the text up, eventually as you see, it begins to fade because of the softness. And by the time it gets through the boundary or the rect rec transform, it's fully faded. Okay, so this looks kind of cool and nice. Now if I use the X offset, you know, the same thing happens. So now it's pretty neat that we can control, you know, we can make sure that the text inside of our margins is fully opaque, totally nice, looks exactly the way we want it. And now we have, a, I guess, a safe region where we can add some softness to it in order to get our fading. Now, the margin, by the way, is not restricted or, or limited to direct transform. I'm not sure it makes sense to drag the margin outside, but you can see that, you know, it works and it does fade the text, which is kind of cool anyway. So anyway, so this is sort of a glimpse of the first implementation of the margins feature. Uh, I'd love to get your feedback or in, uh, and slash input. Uh, so please feel free to uh, leave any comments. Thank you for watching.